Hello and welcome back to the Insult Case with me, Barden. Hope you're keeping well. Right, we're on to the next part. We're down at the beach. The beach. The screeching of gulls and endless white, well, brown, okay, fine grey beach and the sound of the waves. Clean, well, potentially clean water. The algae are, are way too dense to really tell. Okay. It actually kind of looks pretty similar to the beach just down the road from where I live. You walk on the sand and move a little closer to the waterline, curious about what you might discover there. Although the sea is not stormy and the tide is low, Innsmouth Beach is not really a touristy place. Everything is simply too grey. This is what you associate with a real vacation. Sea, cocktails, telev television. Let's go with sea, I guess. The sea. On the horizon, the ocean looks limitless. The rhythm of the waves is hypnotic. Spending time here is much better than visiting the dive bar next door. In the future, you should make a day trip to run down coastal villages more often. Oh, make day trips to run down... Okay, let me read that again then. In the future, you should make day trips to run down coastal villages more often. Lost in thought, you keep wandering over the dunes. You notice how all the colours of the sea and the beach seem to be swallowed up by the strange light conditions here. You hold your hand up in front of your face. Your skin looks grey and matte. But still, you feel relaxed. The murmur of the sea invigorates you. This is not good. You feel a deep sense of longing within you. A serene sense of inner peace and freedom. Until the techno music starts. A monotonous beat. The sound seems to come directly from the beach, but a hundred yards off in the distance, which appears to be surrounded by about a dozen people. Given the changing weather, it's perhaps no surprise. What else is one supposed to do on this beach, apart from drink cheap cocktails and dancing to bad music? Something strange grabs your attention. A kind of cage standing in the shallow water, perhaps twelve feet wide and deep. You walk. Uh, to the beach bar. The cries of the seagulls are increasingly drowned out by early 90s techno beats. One note, that's all people need to enjoy themselves. One note in an endless loop. The owner of the beach bar has taken great pains to make up for some of Innsmouth's deficits. The bar is made from wooden planks and features a nice countertop and an exotic canopy made from palm trees. Admittedly, the palm trees are no longer green. They're grey and dried out, just as if a demon had sucked the life force out of them. But it's easy to imagine that all this must have looked quite pretty once. Yeah, but well, how long ago? Because this place seems to, seems to suck the life out of things very quickly. The bar is flanked by wooden bar stools, and a few metres away, towards the ocean, two rows of deck chairs have been put up so that uh, people can get drunk while lying down. From a distance the bar looked busy, but now as you arrive you realise that the party is already over, if it ever did take place. A dozen people hang out here, a few surfer dudes stagger about like zombies, some of them carry empty cocktail glasses around, some of them yell party and woohoo enthusiastically, precisely this kind of people. A guy with long hair and sunglasses nods his head in time to the techno beat and taps along on the bar counter with his flat hand. There's no bar staff in sight. One of the tourist uh, families you had spotted on the way here has spread out on the deck chairs. They are evidently trying to keep away from the party. You look around. Um, let's... Well, they're touristy, right? So they might know too much. Let's sit at the bar and see if we can talk to the guy there. You follow an instinct and sit down at the bar. This place reminds you of your favourite bar in Boston. Only that here, there's sand on the ground instead of vomit. You feel at home. Yeah, there's the surfer dude. Some hippie is poking at the slushy fruit remains in his cocktail glass with a straw. He nods over to you as you sit down. 
this is clearly not his first drink. Where's the bartender? Where's the bartender? He stops poking the fruit in his glass around and pushes his bandana into place. Dunno. Things were really happening, you, you get me? Then Zeke took off about an hour ago and since then no booze. He sighs. It's the kind of sigh that you might hear from a war veteran. Why would someone simply leave a busy beach bar? A bar with an unattended supply of alcohol. Something's not right. Let's take up one of the deck chairs while we wait for his return. How about that? It can't hurt to just rest for a moment. It means you'll be able to resume your mission full of energy. Or whatever. But that's not good. Most of the chairs are free. All offer excellent views of the sea and the increasingly cloudy horizon. You're spoiled for choice. Of course you're going... Over to where the other tourists are. Why not? Maybe you'll be able to learn their language if you spend some time around them. It's one of the families you've already noticed a few times today. Happily chatting parents who are constantly eating and their chronically bad-tempered children. The four are hard to miss with their loud chatter and tasteless tourist outfits. They've settled down on the deck chairs, sipping on some soft drinks. You clear your throat. The, intentional, the international sign for, Hello there, I would like to say something. What are you going to ask them? Yeah, let's ask them about the cages. Do you know what those cages are for? That strange frame along the water, in the middle of nowhere. You have to keep thinking about it. Do you know what these cages are for? You ask the parents. Oh, those, the father. His face lights up. We're just taking some photos of them. I think they're for children to climb on. They're not meant for children, his wife chips in. That's how people here catch lobster and whales and things like that. Bullshit, the son murmurs. He pokes the sand with a wooden branch, probably imagining he's stabbing someone. They're from the Middle Ages and people were put in them to drown. Oh, kids. I think he's right. What are you going to ask them? I'm looking for this girl. Looking for this girl, you say, and show them the photo of Tabitha. The parents bend forward and squint in order to see the little face better. Nope, sorry, the father says, goes back to sipping his fruit juice. Nope, me neither, the wife adds. Nothing then. Why do we only get to ask people who... who don't spend much time here about the girl? What are you going to ask them? Nothing to hell with him. Nothing to hell with him. Who are you kidding? You decide to learn to lean into your um, antisocial side. You get comfortable on the deck chair. The incoherent chatter of the family remains merely a static noise in the background. We are like the worst detective ever. Why don't we ask the people at the bar? Even though they're drunk, they might know something. Not too shabby. The dark clouds drawing together on the horizon worry you a little, but they're far away enough for you to simply enjoy this moment on a beach. No, we should be going out, having a look at the cages, seeing if that kid is probably right, and talking to the people at the bar. Technically, you've been near a beach the whole time, but you couldn't really switch off. There was a haunting sense of danger, a feeling of paranoia, that you simply couldn't shake off. Luckily, the paranoia has now gone. No, it hasn't. I'm still feeling very paranoid. A cool sea breeze caresses your face as you tune out the other tourists' annoying conversations. You listen to the murmur of the waves. The regular to and fro of the sea has, so has a soothing effect on you. Your eyes fall shut. Ooh, uh oh. It's cold, you're freezing, which is annoying because you had settled down quite comfortably on one of the deck chairs. You could swear you'd notice a shadow while half asleep. There was a figure who tried to grab you and carry you away. Was that all a dream? A chilly wind blows in your face. Oh, damn it. This case is going to be the death of you. You simply lie there as if dead. Your attempts to return to a more comfortable position are punished by a stabbing pain in your behind. Some bit from the chair is digging into you. 
Probably a cheap model. Damn tight asses, you mutter weakly and push yourself into an upright position. The sun is now set and all other holidaymakers have gone. Instead of freezing their asses off, they're probably sitting in a warm hotel by now. The moon illuminates the beach and the waves shimmer in its eerie green glow. Green. Nature is fascinating. You stretch your tensed neck and when you notice some lights off in the distance. Night has fallen and with each passing minute it seems to get chillier. The lights appear to be moving and are leading away from the town. You wonder whether you should take a closer look at the, at the spectacle or go to your warm hotel. We, we are an investigator. We're going to obviously take a look. You go along the beach towards the lights. Why not? The day is almost over anyway and maybe you can at least manage to figure out what the lights in the distance are all about. You trudge through the sand. Then you notice that the lights you are heading towards are moving. They do not stand still but twitch back and forth. Hang on a minute, you're on the beach, it's night. Weird blinking lights? The torches, they've got to be torches. This is clearly... <laughs> really? Really? The UFO sect, the sex cult, a rave. A rave, that makes sense. The only question is whether you'll join the party or not. Raves have always been... Um, what type of guy is he? I can like he's got a favorite bar in Boston, so I'm gonna say that raves to him would be annoying. Annoying. Strange convulsions and glow sticks. No thanks. If you do go for a jig, there would have to be real music. But generally, you prefer a good game of chess. You slow down and let your arms hang down by your sides. You walked all the way out here for this? A rave party? You walk farther along. I want to find out if it is a rave party or not. You've arrived. Somewhat incident, indecisively, you stand on the sand dune and take in the spectrum. There are 20, maybe 30 people who have gathered here on the beach close to the waves. You can see that they are naked under the rags and nets that they are wearing on their bodies. They are performing sensual and seemingly uncontrolled dance while waving glow sticks in the air. The masks that people are wearing seem familiar from film and television. Distorted faces with angry mouths and ugly goggle eyes reminds you a little of voodoo, but here on the coast of New England? You are not quite sure anymore whether you are at a rave party or actually an exotic fertility ritual, ritual. The acoustics are bad. Instead of the clear techno beat, the people here rely on singing. They could do with rehearsing though. Without any sense of rhythm, the people are chanting the same refrain over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Cthulhu. Fathaga. Let's watch. You make yourself comfortable on the cool sand of the dune. A good decision. You make a perfect view of the dancer, you have a perfect view of the dancers. A bizarre spectacle, all in all, and and exotic. You don't think that a dump like Innsmouth would put on performances like these? The men and women stretch their bodies into impossible shapes, keep singing their admittedly somewhat monotonous song for minutes on end. They run around in circles on the sand. The ground is marked with glowing green spray paint. The people, excuse me. The people keep brushing against each other. Some of them are really going for it and have started uh, licking each other. That means you... We're not going to join in. We're going to disapprove. Such a performance is probably the annual highlight for the, this country folk. Let yourself go once a year and let's spend the remaining 364 days stiff as the poker. Little like that. You smugly keep watching the bizarre performance from a distance. The performance seems to be shifting on onto its next phase. Another group of amateur actors joins the dancers. They come straight out of the out of the water and wear costumes more suitable for Halloween than a rave party. These green shimmering costumes are very strange indeed, and you can't make much of them. 
don't think they're costumes. No doubt the men are walking on stilts as they tower over the dancers. Long, much too long arms dangle from the sides of the puffed out chest, which end in clawed hands. How are they supposed to dance with that? And then those helmets, deformed mouths, sunken noses and ugly pop eyes, they remind you of footage from deep sea nature documentaries. The costumes people are warmly welcomed and mingle with the people. Then they start to... Whoa! Okay, this part is definitely X-rated. A brave choice for a tourist entertainment program. You... Keep watching. All that's missing now are nachos and popcorn. Spellbound by the spectacle, you lean forward. It's lucky that you're watching the whole thing from a small distance, because whoever put this on must certainly be charging a mission for the spectacle. What you see here can usually only be found on a dubious website. That's what people say, anyway. Meanwhile, all the costume figures are rolling in the sand with the dancers. No one is singing anymore. The monotonous chants has turned into soft moaning. You start to get bored. After an exciting start, the orgy quickly loses its appeal. You have to perform a maximum of 5 out of 10 sea stars. Maybe it's time to head home. Let's keep watching just a little longer. Well, you're here already. Might as well. You're wasting your time. There are no more twists in the performance. Granted, the surprise orgy is hard to top. When you have already given up hope, Something does happen though. The costume performers gradually remove themselves from the partners and leave. To be precise, they go back the way they came, into the sea. The whole scene, initially a place where people danced in a slightly demented fashion, is now littered with heavy breathing, blissful smiling actors. Blissfully smiling actors. You can only guess at what the deeper meaning of this performance was. You think it likely that you've witnessed some live performance act art. I don't think so. But then again, he doesn't know anything about Cthulhu, so I can see why he might think that. Trey cheek, Trey crap. Trey crap. You could never understand the fascination of people who pace so-called artists, draft buildings and bedsheets. It was bedsheets, right? Anyway. Okay, you're done with this. Compliments to the amateur actors who are still lolling around naked with each other, especially given these cool temperatures. You can't wait to get into a warm bed. Let's just hope that by then, these images uh, will have disappeared from your mind and won't disturb your sleep. You pat the sand off your clothes and make your way to the hotel. Okay, and that's where we're going to end that one. So, hope you have enjoyed. Hope you're keeping safe out there and hope to see you next time goodbye i hope you enjoyed this video if you did maybe consider hitting the subscribe button there on the right or checking out some other videos here on the left or perhaps you might even share with some friends